Hi, welcome to lesson five, you're halfway there. In this lesson, we're diving right into the Swift programming language. For this video and the next two, you're going to be learning about the basics of Swift. This is stuff that you're going to need to know in order to complete the project that we're working on together. I know that the coding part is intimidating to a lot of people, but I want you to stick with this lesson and the next two. Really pay attention and I recommend that you open up Xcode on your own computer and type out exactly what I'm showing you on the screen. By doing that, it's going to help you remember the language structure and the keywords without having to memorize anything. And I promise you, by lesson 10, you will be able to write Swift code. All right, let's get started. When you launch Xcode, you're gonna see this option here to get started with the playground. So go ahead and click that. And we're under iOS, we're just gonna choose a blank playground. Go ahead and create that on your desktop. You're gonna see something like this. A playground is not an entirely new Xcode project like we've been creating in the past few lessons. Rather, it's a lightweight place where we can test out some code, so it's perfect for what we need to do. If you don't have the line numbers on the left-hand side there and you'd like them, just go into your Xcode preferences under the text editing section of the preferences. You'll see a checkbox that you can enable to show your line numbers. In this playground right here, you're going to see this editor area in the middle where you can write some code. On the top, you're going to see a status bar. Mine says ready right now. Yours might say launching simulator or it might be spinning and doing something. And when it turns ready, you're going to see some text on the right hand side here. Now this is sort of like a preview pane. I don't want you to pay too much attention to what goes on right here because uh, depending on your version of Xcode, you might see something different than what I see and I don't want you to get confused. Uh, what we are going to do, however, is click this little arrow right here to show this console area. And we're going to focus on the output that is down here rather than the output here. Okay, so let's talk about some of the code that you see on the screen, starting from the top. At the top, you're going to see this text in green. This isn't actually code that is going to be executed. These are called comments. And they're basically notes or remarks that you can leave for yourself to remind yourself what this piece of code does or why you wrote it. You can write a comment as long as you start the line with these two forward slashes. Anything you write after that on the same line will be regarded as a comment and it won't be run as code. For example, down here, we can start with two forward slashes and we can say a comment like just testing out some code. Now, obviously when you write comments for your own projects, they are going to be much more meaningful than that but this is just to demonstrate a comment. When you're working with a team of people, it's crucial that you leave comments to show your teammates your reasoning and your rationale behind the code that you're writing. If you're working by yourself, it's also crucial to leave comments because when you come back to your project months later down the road, you won't remember why you wrote that code unless you've left yourself comments. Now the line below the comment, import UIKit, UIKit is something that we're going to talk a lot about later, but for now, just know that it's a library full of code that Apple provides, and it contains a lot of useful stuff for building apps. Import is a special keyword that says that we want to use that library of code. By importing it, we'll be able to take advantage of the UIKit library. Before we talk about the next line of code, this one right here, we need to talk about variables. In an app, there's lots of data being passed around. You need a way to keep track of this data. That's what variables are for. You can think of variables as kind of like a sticky tab. You know those ones where you can stick on a page, you can give it a name, and it keeps track of that page, or in our case, a piece of data. Let's talk about the line of code below. Now following our analogy, var is a special keyword in Swift that creates a new sticky tab. str is, in this case, the name that we write on the sticky tab. Hello world is the piece of data that we want this variable to keep track of. The equal sign is assigning that data to that variable. In the case of our analogy, it's like sticking that sticky tab on the page that we want to keep track of. Now this line of code here on line seven makes sense, right? We are declaring a new variable called str and we are assigning hello playground to it. Now using our sticky tab analogy, what if we changed our mind, peeled off that sticky tab and stuck it on another page? Well, we can do that with our variable too, but there's just one catch. Let's just say that we used a permanent marker to write the name on that sticky tab so we can't change the name. This is how our variable works. Just like moving our sticky tab to point to another page, we can point our variable to another piece of data as well. Notice that we don't use the var keyword on this line because we only needed it in line seven 
to create that variable. Now I just said create, so it's easier to understand, but the proper terminology is declaring a variable. So we declared str on line seven, and on line nine, we're simply assigning it another piece of data. So you can see that now that we have another line of code, we have an another preview here, but again, I don't want you to pay attention to that because your preview might look different than what I have depending on your version of Xcode. I alluded to being able to uh, show the output down here and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna use a keyword called print and that's going to allow us to output the contents of our variable. So in here, in between these two statements, let's write print and then you want to open a round bracket like that. And this menu that comes up is Xcode trying to auto-complete what you're writing. In other words, it's just Xcode trying to make your life easier by trying to guess what you want to type and allowing you to select it from this menu. We don't need to do that right now. Type str, and if you don't have this closing bracket that I have here, just on your keyboard, hit the closing bracket to complete the statement. When you do that down here in the console area, you should see hello playground. And this is the contents of the str variable, which is what the print statement does. Now on your own playground, if you don't see that output yet, you might see at the top of the status bar, it doesn't say ready. Instead, it might be like running the code or something like that. Or if you don't even see that, what I want you to make sure is that this icon here, this play button is in blue. And if yours is not, then I want you to click and hold this and make sure that it's set to automatically run. Because if you set it to manually run, you're gonna to have to uh, click this play button every time you want it to process the code. But when it's set to automatically run, every time we change the code in this editor area, it's going to rerun the code and uh, process all of the output that it needs to show down here. Now let's try printing the contents of str again, but this time after we've changed it. So type print, open up a round bracket, str, and then you can close that round bracket. And then it's processing, but after it processes, you can see down here that this is the first print statement, this is the second print statement. So you see, after we changed what our variable is pointing to, and we printed it out, indeed, it says another playground. Next, we're gonna talk about constants. Constants are just like variables, except that once you assign data to it, that's it that constant can't point to anything else. Following our sticky tab analogy, imagine that before you stuck the tab on the sheet of paper, you applied some super glue, and then you stuck it on the paper. There's no way you're gonna peel off that tab. That's like a constant. The syntax for a constant is pretty much the same, except that we use the let keyword instead of the var keyword, which we used before. Let's go back to our playground and try it out. So we're going to type this out using let. We're gonna say let str equals um, yet another playground. Now your Xcode might be processing, but once it does, you're going to see that it declares an error here, and it's gonna highlight this line in red, and also in the console, you'll see that there is an error. The problem is that constants and variables must have different names because otherwise it would be quite confusing. Let's change the name of our constant. Now I'm just going to call it con, and now the error goes away, and everything is fine. Let's try assigning something different to our con constant. Let Xcode do its thing, and then it's going to tell you that you cannot assign another piece of data to our constant. Because like I said, a constant, once you assign a piece of data to it, that's it. Now you might be wondering, why would we want to use a constant versus a variable? Well, sometimes when you're programming and you wanna keep track of a piece of data and you wanna make sure that no one else touches it or changes it, that's when you would use a constant. You would use a variable when you expect that the data it points to will change or maybe it gets updated or something like that. So let's go ahead and erase this line here. Now I don't know if you've noticed, but so far we've only been assigning pieces of text to our constants and variables. Well, there are other types of data that we can assign too. This brings us to the next topic data types. The pieces of text that we've been assigning to our variables and constants are called strings. Now I know it's kind of a strange term. I remember when I first started programming, I thought of those as strings of characters forming a piece of text. The next data type is Boolean or bool for short. A Boolean value is going to be either true or false, 
perfect for keeping track of those pieces of data, which are only going to be one of two values. Don't worry, we're going to try all of these out in the playground in just a second. Next up, we have integers or int for short. These represent integers, just like you learned in math class. Integers are whole numbers in the positive or negative range, including zero. You might ask, what about decimals? Don't worry, we've got that. Float is what you're looking for. The float data type represents floating point data. In other words, your decimal numbers. We've just covered four data types and we're about to go back to our playground and try them out. But I just want to say there are more data types. However, these four are great to start with. At the end, I have a swift cheat sheet that includes the rest of them. And I have a worksheet for you to get extra practice from too. All right, let's go back to the playground and try this stuff out. All right, first let's try out Booleans. So I'm going to declare, I'm just going to use the variable name B and we're just going to type the value as true. Now this is a Boolean. Now let's print out B like that. And you're going to see down here that it says true. The other value that you can assign B to is simply false. And true or false are special keywords in Swift that you can use as the values for a Boolean variable. Next up, we have integers. So let's create one like this. And you know, an integer can be something like that, you know, or it can be zero. Or like we said, it could be a negative number. All right, now let's try working with some float data types. So I'm going to use the variable f and we're going to say something like that or something like that for instance. And then we can also go ahead and print this out and print out f and we'll print out i as well. And you can see that with the print statement down here, the contents of the variable is just the last value that I've assigned to it. Now that we've gone through data types, let me tell you one other thing about variables and constants. A variable or a constant can only store data of one type. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me demonstrate. So for example, we have this variable i here and we've assigned to it an integer and we can reassign it different integers, right? But however, let me try to assign it suddenly a float. And it's going to say, I can't assign a double to a type int. And double is just another data type that stores decimal numbers, just like float does, except that it's less precise. It can't store as many decimal places as a float data type can. Anyways, it's saying that we can't assign a value of type double, which is what this is, to a type of int, which is what i is. But where did we specify that our variable i could only store int data types. We didn't specify that, in fact. What it did was it took the first thing that you assigned to that variable and it basically inferred the data type from that value. Because we assigned 32 into the variable i and 32 is an int, this variable assumed that it would only store int values. And so suddenly when we try to assign it a double or a float value, that's going to cause an error. Same thing goes for these other lines of code up here. So var b equals false. b now can only store Boolean values, right? If I did b equals true, that would be fine. But if I suddenly did, you know, b equals test or something like that, and I tried to assign a string to it, you'll see that there is another error. So I just want you to make a mental note of that. So let me just erase these lines of code like that. Another thing I want you to make aware of is that we can explicitly state that a variable can only store a certain data type. And we do that when we declare the variable here and we use colon and then we type out the data type that tells Xcode that we want this variable I to only store integer types. If I declare my variable like this, and I say that I can only store integer types and I suddenly try to um, assign it a float, it's not going to like that, even though it's the first thing I'm assigning to it, All right? So that is just something I wanted you to know. I can do this with this as well, just to show you what the data type names are like that. So that's all fine. I'm just explicitly stating that these variables 
store this data type float int bool and string at the same time like you saw we can leave that out and it will just infer from the first piece of data that we assign it that that is the data type for that variable so that is your first lesson in swift programming you learned about variables constants and how they can store values you also learned about data types specifically bool string int and float I have a Swift cheat sheet for you guys that covers all of this stuff and it's going to be a handy reference to keep around as you're learning Swift. I also have a worksheet for you that's going to cover using variables and performing math operations on them. So I highly recommend that you download that and check it out. You can get them both by following the URL that's on the screen or the URL in the description below. But first, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below and if you don't want to miss a single video, make sure you click that bell icon as well. Now I want to turn it over to you. Is Swift programming your first time learning coding or do you know some other programming language? Let me know by leaving a quick comment below. So thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you in the next lesson.